A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. How many times have you watched a movie and thought the visual effects look too artificial? In fact, many of the movies from small independent films to big budget epics employ some kind of computer-generated imaging. But what makes these digital illusions so convincing? Visual effects artist Ren Weichmann has some insight. And in today's talk, he'll open his toolbox to analyze what happens when this work goes awry. Computer-generated imagery, or CGI, has allowed for a massive range of new stories to be told through movies and TV shows. Black holes, dragons, superheroes, oh my. I used to think of CGI as some sort of mysterious nerd magic that could only be achieved on some powerful supercomputer at a Hollywood studio. I began my own visual effects journey when I discovered that this wasn't the case. This is an actual career path for thousands of artists across the world. I love bringing things to life that didn't previously exist. And at the heart of that, for me, are visual effects. I am a big fan. Now, not everyone shares my excitement, and I get that. It's fine, because sometimes the effects suck. Sometimes you notice bad CGI, and it takes you out of the movie, because you go to movies to enjoy stories. And when you're taken out, that sucks. I am hesitant to, you know, just openly criticize the effects of a movie, because a lot of hardworking artists help create them. And I think about those artists a lot. But you know who doesn't think about those artists? Basically everyone else. You see, there's a misconception regarding how CGI is created. People tend to think that they're made by computers and not real people. Like it's a Snapchat filter or something. We press a button and poof, movie magic. The Hollywood VFX pipeline, however, is really complicated. First, you need to have proper onset Uh, data acquisition to feed to the camera tracking department so that a bunch of sculptors can build complicated 3D models to send to texture artists who make them look real. And once the lighting is set, you, you have render farms managed 24 hours a day to spit out clean-looking CGI just to land on a compositor's desk who performs video Photoshop to make everything look good. And if you didn't get all that, it's all right. Just understand that VFX have become so ubiquitous these days that we're not wowed by them anymore, and we've become desensitized. While not everyone is an artist, everyone is a judge, or a critic, as they say. If anything is slightly off, audiences can tell that it's fake, and they may not realize how it is, but they can tell. So what tips us off? The first telltale sign is that it simply isn't photoreal, and what I mean by that is that the lighting and materials aren't realistic enough to represent reality. It's a simple idea, but a pretty tall order, and pretty unfair, to be completely honest. I mean, we all have a lot of experience with reality. We see it every waking moment. Everything you see right now has a material property associated with it that reacts to light and therefore how you observe it. Things like color, reflectivity, texture, transparency. Skin, for example, absorbs and scatters the light that hits it. You don't realize it, but you know exactly what all these properties are without having to think about it. So anytime they're wrong, <laughs> you can tell. But it's not just about how CGI looks. It's about how it moves, too. And there are three main ways we actually go about creating motion in the digital world. First, there's animation, where the motion is designed from scratch. Second, we have simulation, which is just you know, putting some rules into a program and then letting it decide where things fall. And lastly, we have motion capture, which records the movements of an actor in order to most accurately replicate the subtle ways that we move. Just like that. And these days, CGI is good enough that, you know, you know it passes initial inspection. We've gotten good enough at rendering and mo moving things that it's not a big deal. But there's one area of scrutiny where only absolute perfection is acceptable. Realistic human faces. People can scrutinize faces to an incredible degree. I mean, it is the defining feature in how we tell each other apart. So when we try to create faces, we can experience what's called the uncanny valley. But as they begin to get more realistic, you begin to connect more. Gollum from Lord of the Rings, for instance, is incredibly lifelike, and I think we even connect with him as a person. 
However, his proportions are all wrong, so you're never really fooled into thinking he's actually human. The familiarity isn't totally there. It's the same reason why we enjoy movies like The Incredibles, but feel disturbed when watching The Polar Express. <laughs> you see, something weird happens when characters begin to get this realistic. We, they fall into the uncanny valley, and we begin to have an adverse reaction. It just goes to show that you can't rush great CGI. And like all forms of art, quality is just a mixture of time and skill. The greatest Renaissance painters took years to complete their paintings, but if I tried to paint something great, it wouldn't matter how much time I spent because I lacked the skill. It's the same reason why you'd probably find Michelangelo making a pretty janky-looking statue if he only had a week to complete it. I'm just being honest. So in the movie industry, where time is finite, artists have to strike a balance. No film is ever finished. It just gets released. So next time you're watching a summer blockbuster, and even if the visuals fall flat, just take a moment to appreciate all the hard work that went unnoticed. Visual effects artists are artists, after all. They pour their blood, sweat, and tears into these stories that capture our imaginations. And sometimes even their best work may have been invisible all along. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Penn. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.